<clears throat> I think this is streaming already, so welcome everybody. I hope that you are all having a fantastic day. Uh, I'm just going to finish setting up here. I'm going to post on Instagram that we are live. So, a little inception thing going on right now. So, say hi, Rod. We are streaming live. Woo! From my living room. Uh, come join us as we draw this. Draw this in your style from the amazing Doodle and Snips. So, join us. We are streaming live. Woo! From my living room. <laughs> Doing social media is always so interesting. It's uh, in ah. social media is incredibly interesting, uh, and the fact that I have to actually create content for it on almost a daily basis can sometimes get a little overwhelming. But if you learn what your limitations are and what you can do and what you can't do with the time that you have to yourself. You can probably maximize the amount of like exposure you can set yourself to. And at the same time, balance your life so you can actually do things with it. Uh, okay. We have my Cintiq pen. Uh, let me check on the stream so I can check your guys' questions. all right so there we are and then here's the chat and and i think i can move the chat i can you can break it come out all right so now i can draw i can see the chat and then i can actually do this perfect all right hi everybody how is everybody doing today? So, we are going to have a lot of fun today. We, let me get this scene changed so you guys can see what I'm doing. So, what we're gonna be drawing is, there's an artist that I follow that drew this amazing little dude, right? <laughs> doodles and drips that is his name i always thought it was doodles and nips <laughs> oh man okay okay noodles and drips created this image and he posted it with the uh, draw this in your style you know hashtag and seeing as it's it's a really cute little derpy animal that has a little bit of a killer look to him uh I'm gonna make my own version of it. And while we do that, I'm gonna answer any questions you guys have. And I'm going to give you guys a couple stories uh, about what fan art normally does for, for artists that receive it. Uh, second, when it's considered good fan art and when it's considered someone stealing your work. And I'll uh, just like chat about whatever we can come up with. So, all right. So, I'm going to give this my own flair. So, it's not just going to be the character. Lately, I've been trying to gear myself towards creating content for my pinup book. So, I'm going to draw this little dude. And this little dude has to have a pinup, and it's going to be quite awesome. So, the first thing that we're going to do, I don't have the idea in my head. I just thought about it maybe like five minutes ago, I don't necessarily have any particular feel in mind yet, but I do want it to be about the size of this page. So the first thing that I'm going to do is understand that I'm going to want to draw this killer little bear, right? And when someone's a killer, you normally have a very static pose. Uh, honestly, like after you probably kill people, you kind of just like embrace it, right? Like, I don't know, like <laughs> every single time that I see somebody um, be like a serial killer that actually enjoys being a serial killer in movies and TVs and stuff like that, 
Uh, it's normally like a stoic feeling or like a feeling of happiness they get after they kill something. So we're going to try to replicate that in some way or another. So right now I'm just going to block him in. And what I really liked about him is that he kind of resembles um, the Cuddles character that I like to draw. And so I'm going to my own flair to it, I might draw Cuddles doing this. I love drawing bears. Bears are one of my favorite animals to draw. And it's, it's a funny story why. Um, I worked at the San Diego Zoo for about five years. And I was a caricature artist at the zoo. And I used to uh, have to draw a lot of animals because people would ask. <laughs> yeah, let me show you guys. Uh, so we would be drawing caricatures, right? So I'd be like, yay! You'd have like a person that would come get a drawing and you draw their face. And then you would have to let them choose what animal they get to be drawn riding. So a lot of the times they want to be with pandas because pandas were the like the animal at the zoo. Uh, like they were on loan from like China or something like that. And well, you know, that's why they were super popular. So you would have to draw them with pandas. Now, there was a bunch of different ways that I would draw a panda. I could draw a panda, like them riding the panda. <laughs> so it'd be something like this, and then you just like draw them riding it. Yay! <laughs> or like with their hands sticking out or something. Or you would draw them with a panda. So the panda would be like chill in the back and take it that we draw these animals a quadrillion times a day right and then it'd be like I don't know like a zookeeper or something right so you draw stuff like this all day every day it got to the point where I was breaking down all the animals that I was drawing into a box. So if I could fit it in a box, I would win that day. So with my pandas, it was it ended up being kind of something like this. So my pandas were more like that. They were straight up just boxes. And there was one like lady that straight up called me out on it and called it like, a, like it looked like a ridiculous like retarded squirrel. And that made me laugh so much. But uh, at the end of the day, I was doing it to enjoy, like, you know, make myself happy. Um, and that's what characters are all about. If you want to be a good character artist, you need to uh, do it for yourself. Like... You don't have to be, you can't be scared of like making people upset or making people sad or hurting someone's feelings because you drew them like a certain way. Nah. If you want to do it for the art form, it's amazing. But you got to do it for yourself. That's kind of like with every other piece of art. Like, you know, it's really cool getting the likes and getting the, the notoriety in them. And people seeing your work and being like oh that's so cool whatever that's really awesome it's a fantastic feeling but the people that create art just for that feeling are the ones that don't end up lasting very long uh, and the reason is that it's really really hard to depend on that 
and actually be uh, motivated on a continuous manner. It's, it's incredibly hard to rely on other people's, you know, like energy in order to make yourself feel better. And that's just something that I've slowly realized lately. Um, I've never been a person that, you know, like craves too much of the attention of people. Uh, the only reason that I started an Instagram back in the day was because I got told to. I didn't think that I was going to do anything. And I personally did not like a lot of the attention that uh, social media brings. Uh, I was always very afraid that I was going to get my stuff stolen. And it's an interesting thing that I have realized over the, over the years. Because I have had that happen. I have had people steal my designs. I've had people profit a lot of it, a lot of money from it. But at the end of the day, you still don't see me putting like watermarks on my drawings. You don't see me like, you know, getting overly protective of the stuff that I'm doing. Mostly because my aim is to share my information with people. It'd be a lot different if I was trying to push a brand or if I was trying to, uh, like if I was actually trying to push for a certain brand to have my identity, it would be devastating to see somebody steal my work. You know? So that's, that's what kept me from sharing on social media for a very long time. And, you know, it's, it's a fear that I... I wish I didn't like adopt because I've realized over the years, even with the times where people have stolen artwork from me, it's never like, n how do we explain this? It never, it was never so devastating that it made me not want to share my artwork the way that it's supposed to be shown. Um, like, I am a very, very strong advocate that if you're going to show any of your work, it has to be at 100%. You know, like, if it's just going to be sketches, fantastic. Show your sketches at how they are at 100%. If you're going to show finished artwork, show it at a hundred percent of like its capabilities like how much can you get from showing that you know piece of art so whenever i'm drawing and i see a potential for you know someone to steal my design or you know like i'm old like i've gotten mad i've gone to court for people with people it never ends up well uh, it most of the time ends up in the same consequences that, you know, like a person that did credit card fraud and like does, and you don't really get reprimanded, you know, um, uh, I never really got any compensation for the things that got stolen. And at the end of the day, it was just, uh, a pain in the ass every single time. So what I started doing instead was every single time that someone stole my work, I would just be like, dude, you guys like my work. How about we work together? How about we work together and then we just fucking kill it? And I've gotten a lot of clients like that. And actually, it was a very, very, uh, very common thing uh, back when I was like doing like designs for skateboard companies and stuff like that, like it just happened. Like there's a certain look, a certain style that people find like entertaining or really cool. And that's what everybody tries to replicate. There was a, uh, one design that I did. It was like a hula, it was a hula girl. No one was like copied a lot, but I did it for like a little independent um, skate company called Soda Factory. Oh, the good old days of skating. 
Okay, so I have the general idea of what the little bear is going to be like. I still am not 100% sold on the actual part right here. Because I think if I bring the cheek up, I have to bring this little, like, the muzzle thing up. Right? So if I bring this up, I have to bring this up. If I do that, I'm going to have to do the same kind of on the other side. And I want to keep it from looking like a lion or something like that. So... I also don't want it to look like Archie. I want it to look more a little bit like that bear, but it has a really big ears. Looks like a Care Bear, but big ears like a mouse. All right, so we have that. There's like cylinders inside, and I guess his eyes are wider. A little bit wider. He really has those big eyes. Just generalize the shape again. Then I'm going to just bring the opacity down. I'm just going to sketch over it until it's good. Um, he has like double chins and stuff, so I might make him a little chunky. No, but he has a, he's a stuffed animal too, so. So we have a little axe, but the axe, if we want to make the most of the axe, we're going to make it pointing down so we can have blood dripping from there, right? Like we want to maximize, whenever we see an element, we want to maximize it. So maybe he's just holding like that. That's going to give us a little bit of forward depth. Some perspective going on right here. In opposite directions, like I mean. <laughs> We're gonna have a lot of fun with those eyes. Uh, just gotta figure out the look that we want from. Ah, there you go. Something like that looks nice. I'm gonna find the cheeks. I'm gonna close the cheeks. The eyes are popping out of the skull, like straight up popping out. Like, okay, you have your eye, and you have your eye socket, right? And then this guy has like a little tiny, like, but super big cheeks. So the skull shape is more like that for him. These eyes don't stay within the shape of the... These things are like bulging out of the eye socket. Look like it's overlapping. Okay, okay so we have that. Then it's just going to be over here to the side. Have some smoke coming. All right, let's uh, look at some messages because it seems like you guys have been active on here. Hello there, what's up? Says Jack Bolin. Welcome back, Jack. How's it going? Tank owner, what's up? What's up? Um, Jack, anyone like soup? <laughs> I like that you're trying to start a conversation. Uh, Breezy J, hey, what's up? What up? Dr. C, you made it. Dragons on stilts. Dude, you're always here. Thank you so much. Uh, Jack Bowen, not bad either way. Um, JP Pat, another good Monday to draw. Definitely. If you guys do not have your sketchbooks out, um, I recommend you guys uh, bust, bust it out. Draw along with me. I would definitely enjoy having a little bit of time and having fun with you guys. So, please... Make sure that you're drawing along. And then if you guys do make something, tag me. I would love to see all this stuff. Uh, Dr. C, your stuff are NFTs waiting to happen, by the way. I know. I've been asked this a lot. And wants to help me. Feel free to message me. I would love to talk to you about that. 
So, here to catch the stream tonight. Oh, I'm glad to have you on board. Wandering Ronin, if we make fan art of you, where would you like to send it to? Social media wise. Send it on my Instagram. I check my Instagram countless times a day. That is where I live. So, feel free to send it to me there. Um, happy that bear went from zero to a hundred really quick. It, it tends to happen as I start sketching. It just, it just starts coming together. Is it not that bad? Uh, but if it is, you know, um, this will be uploaded later as an entire video. So if it is very laggy, don't worry so much about it. You know, feel free to uh, tune out. It'll be on there, you know, later on. But if you guys do want to stay with me, then fantastic. I would love to have your company tonight. So, okay, we have this little dude. And now we are going to create another layer and we're going to create some background elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to set a scene and I'm going to try to figure out some fun way to make the scene look appealing. Now I can make it so it's right there. So he's in perspective, like sitting next to maybe a splattered wall with like blood stains. You know, he's still a killer. And then we can add like a handprint or something. You know, something like that. Um, figuring out just what the composition is gonna be like, right? So if we have that there, uh, then we can draw like some sort of element in the foreground that indicates that he just got rid of someone. The element could be like a bent knee into like a shoe, but then it covers too much of the character. So what we're going to do is we're going to probably just put like the side of a face and like someone chopped up or something. Something like that. Make that a little smaller and just shift it to the side. It just has to be an element in the foreground that represents a foreground. And it's going to be used for storytelling. So now we have roughly the elements that we want. We want to maybe make this scene a little bit more, you know, like cuddly on top of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add little elements like a ball with little stars, uh, maybe other plushies behind them. They said a rabbit, right? So maybe we'll draw a little rabbit as a silhouette and then some other toy over here. Maybe an elephant. And all these toys will have like splatter from the blood. And then uh, hmm. over here, we can just continue on and maybe make like a unicorn or something. Just this, it's going to be a silhouette. So as long as it looks like something. In there. Now we don't really need this little skull right here. We want to be able to call out the artist for his like recognizing it. So we got to make sure that we create that in the initial layout. If you wait until uh, later on in your design to add where the signature and stuff like that is going to go, you're always going to try to find a place for it instead of it making it look nice. So this is a draw this in your style. And then let's hashtag that. Doodle and drips. Is it doodles and drip? Doodle and drips. Doodles and drips. And drips. So I don't like my signature being that big. I like it being small. And 
Now, an idea would be to maybe a thought bubble, but doing that turns it into more of a storytelling thing. So what I want to do, hmm, how about we make it into a comic book? That comic book layout they look pretty funny. Yeah, I like that. And then we can play with this element coming out. Right? Like the axe can be like coming out of a page. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds fun. And then this, I can take his art, like his like icon, like his image, put it right there, draw this in your style, the name, and then we come up with a fun title. And then there you go. I think we have the layout that we might do today. That, that looks pretty fun. Uh, I might have to make him a little bit smaller just so he fits within that layout a little bit better. Bam. All right, so I'm gonna look first to make sure that he doesn't have a name for it yet. If he doesn't have a name for it yet, here's Teddy. Let's see, so his name's Teddy. All right. Okay, there's some, a lot of really cool things here. Uh, so, Teddy. So, here, Teddy. Boom. Now we have our title, a little hashtag in there, and he's going to have a little thought, a little black thought bubble. And then, the heart's gonna be dripping. There you go, something like that. Okay, now that we have our layout, I'm going to get rid of any extra stuff that I know I'm not gonna need. Remove this out of the way. So I'm gonna make this into a comic book thing. So maybe the paint, like the splatter, doesn't go as high up. And we just figure out some way or another to make it work from there. But well, we still want the, a little bit of an indication of the toys in the background because that's something that I do want to do. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. All right. So now we have those three. I'm just going to merge those layers together. And I'm going to bring the opacity down a little bit, or a lot of it. And I'm going to start refining the design. Choo -choo -doo. All right, let's see. Uh, oh. Yo, 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 quick sketch. d -Rog Illustrator says, yo, 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 yo. Justin McCool, hello, sir. Hi, sir, to you back. Supreme Pirate King, Mr. Ron the Gone. Did you have any comic artist that you're a fan of? Um, yeah, uh, I do. Uh, Umberto Ramos is one of my favorite, absolute favorites. Um, I love, I love Scott Campbell's artwork. I always have. Um, Mr. Campbell, uh, I've had the pleasure of actually meeting him. Um, and it's been really, really cool to go to conventions and, uh, like participating in conventions and then getting to meet all these people, like as they actually are, like after the convention's done and like you're tired and you've been just dealing with people all day. And then that's when you really get to see the people for who they are. And 
Uh, him and his uh, girlfriend were always uh, really nice to me and Marianne. So whenever we met him. So I enjoy Scott Campbell. Uh, maybe not comics. Like not a comic ever have a big, 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 you know, like spot in my heart. Uh, I grew up with those comics. Uh, I loved them even before I was going to be an artist. It was just um, something that I really cherished when I was younger. And it, I, I believe it helped a lot when I was uh, going through college and not knowing how to draw. Uh, seeing his artwork and how expressive it was with such finesse and refinement that it just made it look so effortless. Um, it was always a huge inspiration to me. The other person that I really, really looked up to uh, was Sergio Aragonés. And if you guys don't know who that is, uh, he worked for Mad Magazine for a very long time. And all those little doodles and sketches that you would see in the corners and the like and the sides and the on the edges of the page, that was him. Uh, Amazing artist, fantastic artist, um, a Mexican immigrant, and I got to meet him in person, and the guy was just amazing. The guy was just so cool, so humble too. I got him to sign a backpack, <laughs> so I have a leather backpack with a signature and like a little drawing, and it's so cool. Okay, so, hmm, not necessarily digging that. Else. So I'm just since this is draw this in your style. I'm gonna draw my nose. How I want to draw my nose. Okay, so we have that, and then he has like a little muzzle. So I don't know if he's a mouse. Oh, he's a bear. He's supposed to be. A, he's a bear. And he really has that cheekbone, like, digging in and then raising up. I'm going to exaggerate that. So, remember, if you guys were here last week, you'll remember that whenever... Because that provides me the edges of my... of a lot of parts of the character. So in this case, it would be something like that. Right? This provides me the area in which I can have the eye and have it still look anatomically correct. Yeah, you can break the rules, you can change it, you can, you know, exaggerate it, but it's already going to be incredibly exaggerated as is. So there has to be, at least in my, like, certain level of, uh, you know, the level of detail that I like to go to, I like to refine it to the point where I can actually see a tiny bit of anatomical, uh, like rightness to even the simplest drawings. So the eyes are popping out, so I'm gonna draw them bigger than that, but they're still gonna be connected in there somewhere. Here. And I'm just doing a lot of little lines and we're still gonna go back in again and like refine some more and some more. You know, we're just gonna keep going. So right here, what's going on is that the bottom eyelid and then the eye socket is right here. But then the eye socket and the cheek, the cheek overlaps the eye socket. So the you only see this going down. You're going to see this be black because it's darker. It's getting pushed in because it's a shape going in. The eyelid wraps around the eye. So if it's a very bulgy eye, maybe the eyelid would be getting pushed down more. And then this eyelid would go around meeting over here and then creating the wrinkles that you see on the other side. So we have that. The other side is not supposed to be like that, but we still have a bottom eyelid that wraps around the eye. Out this cheek, 
that, we have that. Now we, you know, move down. He doesn't have that big of a chin. But he has a couple double chins. So we're going to take advantage of that fact. My face at this point, it's going to provide me where, where the chin is supposed to be. And then from here, you know that the mouth rotates and that we have a cheekbone and a cheek muscle here. So it has to go underneath this. So wherever I end with the mouth, he has a very wide mouth from the drawing, right? Wide mouth from the drawing. And then right here, you can see how we have this line that is the eye socket that gets overlapped by the eyelid. And then here we have this cheek muscle that sets the limit for where the mouth is supposed to go because the mouth ends up digging underneath that and creating this, the edge pocket. In case you guys are wondering what that little line is every time you draw it. Um, so it's going back. So we gotta figure out how to draw that and make it look appealing. I already exaggerated the cheek going up, so I'm going to exaggerate the mouth as well. I'm going to set the bottom part of the mouth or the top bottom part of the cheek. And then the mouth, it doesn't matter how far into that I extend it, it's going to stop right there. So I'm going to push it all the way back here and I'm going to create just a couple overlapping lines so that it looks a little bit more appealing. He seems like an excitable little critter. So I'm gonna maybe give him like a tooth coming in out of the bottom. No, but then he's gonna look a little bit more like a vampire or like a like a bat. So maybe we just have the edge right there. He's gonna have his cigar or his blunt. Okay, so we have that. He has a very little bottom lip, but that doesn't mean that we can't give it some depth. And then he has his double chins. So his double chins are gonna be a part of see what we have if we remove the sketch that's pretty cool we wouldn't see this part of the eye you probably see a little bit more of the lower eyelid this cheekbone can probably be moved up a little bit and therefore this extended Now, he's gonna have really big eyes and really bubbly eyes too. So, we gotta come up with a way to make him look really, really cool. This side needs to be brought in a little bit. And I just constantly examine the sketch and try to figure out how I'm gonna be continuing on from here. Let's see. Now, we're gonna go into the body. All right, let me read some more comments because otherwise they pile up and then I don't get to all of them. Right. Happy says, any advice on confidence with sharing art? My art isn't even bad. People generally have a warm response to it. I just don't know how to build confidence in my with art yet. Um. Okay, confidence in anything is going to come from 
having it done something so much and then you eventually realize that you're good at what you're doing right now the type of praise that you search for is going to determine if you feel validated or not in what you're doing so i'm action phone so feel free to let uh, let us know like uh what what are you looking forward to getting out of social media and then maybe i can help you narrow it down a little bit more and you know help you focus on that but it's kind of hard as a general aspect because some people just want to get seen but on the other hand some people just don't even want that oh by the way if you guys are looking for something really cool uh i have like about 20 Two copies left of my book. Oh yeah, copy break doodles. Ah! Wait, let, let me make this into the big screen because otherwise you guys can't see it. Bam. This stream and everything Rodgon related to you is brought by Coffee Break Doodles, the art of Rodgon, and similar things and projects that I bring to you. Thanks to everybody that pre-ordered these back in August. I'm sorry that I just barely got to ship them out, but they came out awesome. And it's the first book that I released, really. So hopefully some of you pick it up. Like I said, there's about 20, 20 or so left. And what I get from these is going to fund is going to fund the next projects that I do. I'm not looking to get rich off of these things. It's just a matter of using it to improve the equipment at my studio. Different things that brings content to you guys. So... There's these, and then there's also digital copies of it. So if you live overseas, especially in Australia, because uh, it seems like shipping to Australia is incredibly expensive. Like, incredibly expensive. Like, it was, they were trying to charge me $80 to send the book over there. I was like, what? That didn't even make sense not that heavy of a book so unfortunately for my australian friends uh i might not be able to ship my uh, the book to you guys um just mostly because i feel bad that you would have to pay that much in shipping and that's just nuts so i will send you digital files so you guys can get them printed over there how about that All right, so he has a bunch of forehead wrinkles. Uh, and I'm not so how do you fan out respectively? Okay, so that's what the whole point of this stream was, right? How to make fan art in a respectable manner. So we all, I we normally all learn the same way, and we all learn through imitation. When you like something, you try to replicate it. And with art, that is a very prevalent thing. We replicate the things that we enjoy because that is doing art that's based on somebody else's work. Sometimes we let ourselves get too caught up in the idea that um, copying someone else's work got us a lot of attention. Uh, you tend to get a little bit more of a positive pull than you normally would with most of your like normal work and I did this too when I started and you know unless I was uh, I was always actively trying to make sure that it was okay with the person that I was drawing like whose work I was doing and I would not necessarily post that work either uh, because of the fear that maybe somebody would think that I was trying to rip this person off. And it's just, you know, something I just never want to happen. I was always scared of it happening to myself, so I was very, very cautious with that. Fan art for, of like big studio things. Let's say that you're making fan art of Harry Potter or you're doing fan art of like a Marvel character or something like that. The odds of anyone ever complaining about that are almost null to zero right studios just do not care 
for the most part i mean if you try to make a, like money with it and you try to sell it as your own merchandise yeah you'll get pursued but even then a lot of people get away with it just because it takes a lot more time and effort from the studio to pursue you than they probably want to do it you know but the problem with um doing that to artists that are not studios is that you essentially steal away their their personality right like it ends up being a matter of uh, how to explain this better i should really plan these out before i start talking uh, but look every person that generates art for instagram facebook twitter tumblr like whatever your format is whatever wherever you got a little bit of exposure you're competing with hundreds if not thousands of people for a little tiny sliver that you want to belong to you right it's you're fighting for that little tiny bit of notoriety in order for you to stand out from everyone else. It's almost like a lottery. It's, it really is. It's almost like a lottery that you end up playing and, you know, hopefully you win. Uh, some people do. A lot of people don't. But you can't really... Uh, you essentially eliminate a lot of that artist's possibilities of getting exposure for his art for him when people repost the artwork as their own or copies of the artwork that is very similar to them and as you become a more uh, well-rounded artist because at that point you'll start generating content that's unique to you this is something that mostly happens with people that are starting out. Uh, art students are notorious for doing this. And having been a person that uh, hired and was in the process of hiring a lot of people for, you know, production jobs and art jobs, you'd be surprised at how many students try to rip off other artists because it's very easy to. It's the easiest thing in the world to rip someone off. Like, it takes no effort at all. Let's see if you want to bring this up a little more. Yeah. Like, if you are so adamant about creating something that you, you like, steal from someone so you can get the credit, uh, why not just take that effort and learn how to do the thing you want to do? Like, obviously, you can rep if you can replicate it, you can create it. It just takes a little bit more of an effort to uh, learn the process of doing so. But if you can create, if you can replicate someone's artwork, you can most likely create it. It's just a, a, a shift in your brain that needs to happen. But yeah, like the way to make respectful like fan art is either to make it obvious that it's fan art. Try not to sell it to make a profit because then you are profiting from someone else's idea. I kind of like a little bit less eyelid. And then at the end of the day, that's the only things that you really need to keep in mind. And if you feel like it might be wrong, contact the person and see. Oh, story time, story time, hold on. I'm gonna put this on the side. This, this is story time. All right, gather round children. Uh, we're going to tell the story of the guy that um, copied every single and then, but it was so weird 
because he would even copy down where I signed my name, right? So, but he was trying to pass it off as his own. And these were clearly traced drawings. And so I went to contact the guy and whenever anything like this happens, I give the people the benefit of the doubt every time. That's just the kind of person I am. So I contacted him. I was like, hey, man, um, really like your work, but it's based off my work. The guy blocks me. Woo, that annoyed me so much. So after that, I just literally called him out on my social media. And then all my fans just like jumped on him like, like hellhounds. And it was awesome. <laughs> But not that I would recommend doing that to absolutely anybody. I was just a very frustrated person back then because it was just, uh, it was so insulting to have the person block you. It literally clearly indicates that the person had some ill intent, you know, to go along with what he was trying to do. It wasn't clearly just him trying to replicate my work. He was actively understanding that he was doing something wrong and he just kept doing it. So that's what sparked like a bunch of anger and I'm not showing the drawing again. <laughs> okay, there you go. So, okay. Um, we're going to check back on this guy. I'm loving how it's coming out. The eyes are bulging out. Right? And they're nice and like either chins. It's going to be like little fatty parts. Just make it look like a wrinkly old sock. Now we are going to move down to where he's holding this with his hands. I know that he does around the object. And make sure that I get a nice natural look. Maybe even bend it a little bit so it looks more like a jelly bean. Just to give a tiny bit. Don't necessarily want it to be super sharp like that. So I'm just going to take that shape and then just round it out. And then just create a little tiny overlap in there. Just so it looks like a little bit of compression. And then we're going to draw. Let's see. It's going to have another chin. As he's swinging forward, he'd be leaning forward. So I gotta lean him forward. I gotta move his body back. Now we gotta find the other side of the body, which is right over here. So that's where the body in general falls. Now that we have the general blob of the body, we can split the body. So we know the front's right here, and it would protrude out and forward. But you know what I notice right now? We're not going to be able to see the little uh, Care Bear thing on him if I do that like that. Huh. I'm going to have to adjust this a little bit, because I really like the idea of the Care Bear thing. So, let's see. That's just going to change things a little bit. So we're going to draw the body first, since I want that to be a, an element. I'm going to draw the shape and I'm going to start drawing sculpting lines around it, like if it was a globe. And I'm just going to start mapping out how I want the character to be molded. Now, I want this little Care Bear section to go around the belly in the right way. So that helps me do that really, really quickly. Now, since he has his hand right there, I might, I still want the ax coming forward, but we might have to make him holding it a little bit different. Make his face a little. Okay, so does he have a heart? Yeah, it's a heart. Right. OK. 
Okay. And I guess we can make them stand in. Let's simplify the shape a little bit. And then we can just give them a little nuggies on the bottom. Now, since he's not touching the ground, so we have our character a little bit more balanced out. And let's see. Hmm. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? Because I think we might have to move him a little bit. Okay, this way, if we move him out like this, he might be able to overlap a little bit out of the comic book edge like this a little bit of a shadow okay and now having the axe right here could be on that hand right there. He'll be holding it up. And then this other hand can just be just drooping on the ground. There you go. See? Came up with the solution. It's still going to be the drippy axe. Real quick, so we can start mapping out the rest of the drawing. Perfect. Right, let's, let's map it out without the body part in the front. For now. Improve the perspective here a little bit. Because we really want it to look like it's popping out. This guy is coming out pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna extend the ear a tiny bit because I don't want a tangent. I'm also going to either make this a little bit wider or bring it in a little bit so it doesn't create a tangent with mine. All right, how that looks. Bring this cheekbone down a little. All right, so this is coming out pretty cool. Now we are going to be able to, if we remove this guy, we can probably add some text right here. We can have some sort of element right here. Make his thought bubble, but it's too big. Okay. Something like that, maybe. And let's uh, get rid of this guy for a second. We can have that, and we can have little like paint drips coming down. I guess, you know, that seems to be the thing. <laughs> okay. So some blood dripping from this guy, dripping on the ground, and we'll draw some splatter on the cover for all right, so we have this dude pretty much laid out. Uh, we'll come up with whatever little gaggy like thing we want to have in here. Uh, let's start mapping out a little bit more of how we want the layout to look. And let me grab his logo real fast. If I can find it. All right, go. 
Key dogs, we have it right here. <laughs> so we have that. Let's just frame it. So that'll be draw this in your style. Doodles and drift. Uh, one dollar. Whatever else they have in like comic books. Okay, and then here, steady. Uh, what kind of letters should we draw? Should do some some graffiti style stuff. Let's see if we can uh, play with uh, a brush. And come up with something cool. Okay, we'll do that. I know that you guys can't see the the things that I'm changing right now, but I'm changing. Um, I'm gonna change a little bit of the of the brush settings. So I'm gonna make it into more of a calligraphy brush, and see how that comes out. See if that works. There you go. All right. So let's see this. Here's. really sold on that but I'm gonna use this as a general template kind of like we did with the other like aspects I'm just gonna mold it and get myself three-fourths of the way there and then all I gotta do is come up with the styling that fits it better Here's daddy. and I'll read a couple more comments in a second and then coloring never takes too long, but I got to figure out how, what I'm going to do with the eyes first. So let's read some comments. All right. Um, yeah, it seems like I stream is very laggy. Uh, I really don't know why that's the point. Like that's the case. Um, I have good internet. I just don't know what's going on. It must be something that I, of the settings, I probably changed something when it, uh, when I was doing this uh, UK illustration challenge thing, and that's what threw it off. So I just gotta reset it, reset everything, and then, yeah, just do it again, because this lagging is killing me. Um, yeah. By the way, I know that it's really laggy. So if you guys feel like you know, like clocking out, and then just checking it out when it's actually on the stream like not in the stream on on just on youtube it should be perfect quality and it should be updated there like probably like about an hour or an hour and a half after i finish here so you guys can watch it tomorrow um honestly it's just very embarrassing uh because i don't know what the setting is wrong with it and i've called my internet provider and they tell me nothing's changed so it's it's kind of annoying. I'm gonna go in here and start erasing the lines I absolutely do not need. I like leaving the lines inside the drawing in there just because it might inspire some other detail, some other element. So I leave those in there, but I start just looking for the general big shapes. Alright, so we have, for the most part, our drawing pretty much cemented. 
now we are just going to I'm gonna hide this but everything else is going to get merged together again Maybe not that way, but these two layers. okay so now I have that I can see all the lines that I don't need I'm going to erase them Now I go in and this time I'm going to go in and not actually ink this. So I'm going to reduce this to a little bit, maybe like 30%. I'm gonna start zooming in. I'm gonna choose not my calligraphy brush I made. I'm just gonna go back to normal with it. Make a new layer. Make sure that my smoothing in my brush settings is about 13 to 20%. That's going to provide me a nice solid line and I'm going to start inking. Once I set the width of my brush for the first time, that is going to, I'm going to stay with that brush size for the remainder of the drawing. What I like to do a lot I like to overshoot my lines when I'm drawing, when I'm inking, and then just erase the intersections. That is something that I just got used to doing because I was doing work in Clip Studio, and Clip Studio allows you to do that incredibly easy. So they have uh, this thing called the vector lines or vector layers that allow you to uh, do really, really quick inking. Like that is one of the reasons I love Clip Studio. I have to get a license for this computer though, so I, I just haven't, I've been lazy. So you can see I'm normally just pulling lines going down. I'm not pushing lines. If I go up, I don't feel myself being as stable as when I pull my lines. So I'm constantly pulling and pulling and pulling and then just rotating the my canvas to match that pull. I'm also using just the lines that I sketched as guidelines. They're not set in stone. They're not set like that don't have to hit those lines. If I see that something else can look a little bit better, a little bit, maybe it was off when I sketched it. If I can get a little bit more out of it, I tend to do it at this stage. Okay, let's see. Um, Hey Rodgon, love you, bro. Ah, I love you guys too, man. Heavenly Halo is doing do this in your saw a good way to figure out your art saw. It's a fantastic way to see how somebody else like visualizes your like something that you would do. So I've released a couple. I gotta release one with uh, with Archie though. That that would be fun. Seeing how people would represent Archie would be really fun. But it's it's a really fun way to understand how people how different people draw and design. Okay. This is also the stage where I normally re stay a little bit quiet. Um, don't really know why. It's just um, for some reason I just get more focus when I'm inking than most of the other times that I'm drawing. I don't know why though. It's not like it requires a, a lot more concentration or anything. 
it's just it's my brain see for example here the chin maybe it'd look cuter if it was just like perked up so I'm gonna perk it up I'm gonna give it a little X to make it like just more fun and then follow that line down into my double chin Just all the foldies. Okay. All right. So, Weaverst says hi, Rod. Weaverst, Rod says hi. Ningum, hello, hello. Uh, like honor, love the blunt. <laughs> uh, we don't know if it's a blunt. For all we know, is a chocolate cigarette. Um, what up, guys? Hey, I'm here figuring out if I can find someone to help me scan my drawing, my book. Uh, mostly because I just, I never have time for it. I bought the scanner in November of last year, and I have not had the chance to sit down to you know sketch that uh, to like start scanning them and uh, it's so like disappointing because I really want to get this guy out let's see does doing that make it look like it pops more no but I like it more uh, so in this case I'm going to make the nose bridge a little bit wider just because it looks a little bit more appealing to my eyes. It creates a different depth to this. So, like I like that more. It looks more bubbly, like it's popping out more now that I gave it like a inside indent. gotta keep consistent when you're thick to thin lines so whenever you have a really thick line if it's on the bottom make sure that all your drawing has thick line work on the bottom of the drawing that way it matches This one we might go into a fair amount of detail when it comes down to minor detail. So we want to make sure that everything pops nicely from the get go. That way we don't have to go back and change things later on. When I can't get a straight line, I'll just go in and etch it. Zoom in, etch it, and just go in with a small eraser and just map it out like that. Little tiny, tiny lines at a time. And that's how I personally get like my bigger circle shapes done. Mostly because it's a pain to get them like in one go. Sometimes, like, you just get that miracle and you're like, ah! And then no one's around to like gloat to. Yeah. I live by myself, so. And I'm a very big, like, loner. <laughs> like,. Like, besides from going out from my house to, like, go play pool a couple times a week nowadays, I don't find myself going out at all. I've become a very, very recluse person. And all because I don't have anyone to play Dungeons and Dragons with. Ah, just kidding. 
Uh, more than anything, like Dungeons and Dragons is something that I've always wanted to play, but and every single time I have gotten the small pleasure to play with someone, uh, it never goes beyond like the second day, which just is a bummer. Because I want to level up Ogirdor or Gondor. Gondor the Great, a little tiny uh, gnome, seeker of chaos. I'll have to draw that one there. Right, so we have that. And now we're gonna go to the bigger shapes. So don't be afraid to draw through your lines because you can always erase the intersections. It's easier to erase the intersections than to get the perfect line, trust me. Second try. Third try. <laughs> but now that side is a little bit thicker than this one. Now I'm like that. Now I gotta go and adjust. That's right, oh, looking kind of cool. Looking kind of dope, if I say so. Do people even say dope anymore? You know, I realize that I'm almost 40. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, I'm officially an old person. Uh, not that I care about age and, at all. Like, me being older just means that uh, I'm not as insecure with things I used to be. Uh, I learned to control my emotions, my money, my time, my friendships, and anything else a ton better. And honestly, like, if someone gave me the chance to go back in time and be myself again, I probably wouldn't take that. I was can you draw a quick Loba from, I don't know, Loba. Um, right now, I want to try to get this guy done before the end of the night, so probably not. Uh, I want to steal a platypus. <laughs> okay, so now that we have that, let's go on to the arms. Okay, and the arms are gonna be having drippy parts, so I'm just gonna draw the drippy parts right now. We'll connect some of the blood or there you go. And then it's gonna also be bloody. We'll worry about those details later. And this one looks a little off. And it seems like having more than one more like big drip looks weird. And I don't want that tangent with the leg. So we're gonna adjust this a little bit. We're gonna have it just be like there. Have the drip right there. Okay. Couple, a couple breaks in the blood. So let's show a little bit of the hand. But overall, I think that's going to be. Okay. 
Okay, just moving out the lines a little bit. So tangents like here, I want to avoid these, right? So I want to, if I bring it in or I make this other line come out a little bit more, it creates volume, otherwise it stays flat. So now we have a hand of gooey, bloody substance right there. Uh, we're going to give him like a stitch because he seems to be like a teddy bear. Maybe somebody stitched them. Okay. Now we're going to draw his belly. It's a big fat belly too. then again it's going to intersect with the border that we set so I either have to make it bigger or smaller we'll go with smaller we want all the detail really to be in the front we want all the detail to be focused on up here not necessarily down there In this case, I'm trying to make the hand show like it's going to be holding something while still dripping. Okay, so now that's holding this. sword it becomes a little bit more difficult to get that angle to look right so sometimes you just gotta finesse it until you find it okay. so now this would be staying right because he's holding it All right, that's coming out pretty. It's normally pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that you bought it. If you bought one on like the digital one, uh, uh, awesome, awesome. I'm going to have to contact the people that purchased one physically because I was only charging $15 and I already thought $15 for shipping was a lot, but I can't cover an $89 shipping fee with that. Uh, so. And I would feel really bad for anyone to purchase anything and spend that much money uh, for the book. Like, not that I don't think it's worth it, <laughs> but I know that, yeah, it's just, that's to replicate. And we're going to do that by creating a shadow that happens from the lip overlapping. And we're going to give his little cigar like some lines to help it look like it's round. Same thing with here. We're going to make the ember kind of like the highlight of the piece. And we're going to leave a little bit of spacing in between the line work at the top for some color so that we can make it nice and bright and shiny and against the black it's going to just pop even more 
Okay. Grab that. Gonna put this up. I don't know if you want to add some like a little bit of blue to his smile and stuff. Yeah, but it doesn't look bad. Give it blood on his little chins. <laughs> um okay now to make him balanced because right now I have this other leg over here to make him balanced the leg has to honestly it has just has to shift a little bit and since they're both on the same plane in order to create even more I'm going to imagine them like this I'm just sketching in a different layer right now this is going to be ghosted. See how I'm not drawing them exactly at the same level? If I drew them at the same level, it would look flat. Even though it would look kind of cute. Like if he was just like bending his knees in or something. Huh, that doesn't look too bad. But, 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 we ain't taking the easy way out. So. Never take the easy way out if you can avoid it. Okay, so. Alright, well, we would have that, and then we just gotta make that into little teddy bear legs. Now, the belly would go around and rope around his butt. So, we might have to change the lines of his butt. I think I, I gave him too much of a kadunk dunk. Okay, alright, that doesn't look bad. I'm gonna take advantage of this layer. And then just map out that shadow that I mapped out earlier. Just in a little bit more convincing way. And any other detail that I want to map out right now to make sure I have it right. In this case, I want to start drawing where the eyes are going to look. So we can go a couple different ways, right? The original character has very cuddly eyes. So what we could do is make really big cuddly eyes that are a little unnerving. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that I'm going to actually map out my sphere so that I know where I'm supposed to be drawing this. <laughs> okay, there you go. It's a little better. Okay, and now it's a matter of how big I want it. So I think. So that looks pretty interesting, rather promising. But it still looks a little weird to me, like, for some reason, I feel more confident with something like that. Or more, not more confident, but I think the character itself lends itself better to little crazy eyeballs like that. So I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to bring in this eye cheek. Is this just the eyes? Okay. I'm gonna 
bring this in a little bit more. have our feet maybe we make our feet all like in a puddle of blood too that'll help with the look it'll give it the appearance of shoes like it's wearing some shoes but it'll be just blood stains standing in the pile of blood. Huh, there you go. That came out pretty cool. And just like ripples of water, I'm guessing blood would have little ripples. So I'm just going to draw the little ripples right now. There you go. Perfect. All right, so let's look at it without the sketch again. Let's see where, what we need to adjust, what we need to change, and if we need to erase or delete anything that we already have. Just refine things to make it work a little bit better. If you constantly check your drawings like this, it's going to be a lot less of a surprise when you get to the end and you realize, ah, that's so yeah, I forgot that we have to draw the inside of the ears too. So let's go back and draw it. So at this point, I'm going to create a little bit of a forced shadow just to create that depth that I need in this side so that the ear doesn't just overtake the part right here. And I need that by creating contrast. So it could be a little bit of cross hatching, it could be anything like that, but it just needs to be heavily contrasted. So we come down, we come down, we come down, we come down. Okay, let's check this off again. Let's go back in, change it. Fix any line work that we see as off. Continue down. Get them a little bit too. 
admin part that comes out. If you put more detail towards the top, it'll look more like it's towards the front. Obviously, the farther up you draw something, more detail can be seen. So keep that in mind. just to create the illusion that it's forcing have grippy parts again on this way. And they would fall straight down. In this case, I raised a little bit just to give an indication that there's some depth here. And it also provides you like a guideline to make it look like it's like very saturated with blood. Okay, so we have that and we have that, we have that. This is going to create a tangent again with the edge. So we might want to move that to maybe the middle. All right, so now we have our dude, we have our X, we have our eyes. We're going to go again, and we're going to erase from the original sketch anything that we don't need anymore. And the reason that I'm not just deleting the layer is because I actually enjoy using that initial layer as a shadow layer, as a as a way to map out the rest of the character before I go in and color. And I'll show you guys what I mean. It helps me set contrast levels. Okay, maybe, maybe we move this little chin down a little bit. Just gonna select it with the lasso tool. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Let's make the back a little better. Okay. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, try Ari says hello and that's it so you guys have uh, remained a little quiet that's fine okay so we have this and now we're gonna set our sketch lines or our base tones now what I like to do in this layer is just grab like a black and start mapping out the parts that are going to be colored and the parts that are not or the parts that are going to have darker colors and the parts that are going to have lighter colors in this case the body will be the darker tone so i just go in and fill that out and I'll, yeah you can just fill it in with the bucket tool but this is kind of relaxing to it. I find that my drawings don't miss, like don't like end up, you know, missing those extra like lines. To be perfect, you don't have to get super clean lines all the time.
So I'm finding the contrast sections of the character. Uh, the reason I do this is because I enjoy making sure that not like two areas are connecting if I don't just like with tangents I don't like setting up uh, colors that don't blend well together so doing this helps me uh, I am a little bit colorblind so it also helps blood so that's what I'm gonna do like this And then I'm going to make the handle the darker color because I want that to be like a brown or like a black. And now in this case, yeah, the blood is the, the contrast. So even the same color can, you know, be colored in different. starting to actually uh, see how it's coming along. Twice. A bunch. A bunch of the same color within this whole general shape. So I'm going to Lighten this up. I'm going to actually fill in the nose with black. To create a big focal point right there in the middle of the face. But I'm going to erase a little bit of the top because I know that's where the highlight's going. So now we get a very nice look at the general uh, different color contrast that we're going to need to work around in order to get this character to look right. Now the different tones normally mean that a different color should be there, not just a different shadow. Uh, as long as you do that, your drawing is going to look pretty cool. Mostly learning a little tiny bit of color theory will help you out a lot but since you know I don't really have a lot of time to teach you guys color theory uh, I'm just going to try to explain things as I go along but I need to go use the bathroom real fast so I will be right back meanwhile you guys enjoy uh, this guy and try to study I'm gonna catch up with me Right, I'm back. I'm back. Okay, let's see. Okay, so now that we have this guy, now we're gonna start working into the layout. That way we have a general idea of where it's supposed to be maxed out. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is set the comic border, which I just do by selecting the rectangle tool, going from one edge to the other, mapping it out the same, reversing the selection. And is this all right now? Filling it in black. But we're not going to fill it in with black. We're going to fill it in with white. And then we're going to give it an inside stroke. So we're going to have that. We're going to give it a stroke. And it's going to give us that cool white border that we normally get with comics. Ta da! Now, in this layer, you can, for example, in this case, we want to make this guy. So, by just making shapes within this layer, boom, boom, just gonna make all of these little panels. That way, we can get that out of the way and we can just start doodling. All right, so we already have his artwork because I took a screenshot of his thingy. I'm going to send it to the back. So it's there. Uh, and that should be nice for that. Now, doodles and drips. I'm guessing he would probably enjoy. having like a really nice call out. So we are gonna make a nice call out. And we'll see you guys. And then maybe, there you go. A little bit more spacing. All right, so doodles and drips. Uh, have that, but he is a graffiti artist. It looks like he does graffiti, so I'm going to give this a tiny bit of an arch. And I'm going to distort it a tiny bit. Right. And then I'm going to give it a ton of effects. I'm going to make it look like that. So boom, we're going to give it a stroke, but we're going to give it a colored stroke. Boom. Now we're going to give it a gradient. Uh, let's make the gradient. Since the piece is going to be, yeah, it's going to be like a bluish tint. Let's go with a yellow into an orange. Something like that. Let's reverse this. Just click on reverse. Uh, stroke can be a little bit of a different color. There you go. Copy that same color. And then we're going to make a drop shadow that's going to make it look like a 3D thing. Boom. And then we're going to give it a slight emboss, but not too big just enough to make it pop like a 3D effect. Boom. There you go. Doodles and drips. It's Doodles. Uh, keep on getting his name wrong. Or her name. Actually, I don't know. Could be either way. Uh, let's make this come in a little bit more. There you go. And then we're going to take that same thing and we're going to do the hashtag text. So hashtag got this in your style. We're going to remove the type effect from it. We are going to remove uh, some of these effects and we're just going to 
make it fit right there. Okay, so we're going to probably remove this oh, the gradient, everything. Yeah, let's just remove everything. And then we'll do it. All right, so we have that. Um, the way that I'm gonna hide my uh, do I have it here? Okay, never mind. I'm just gonna bring up my logo. Rodgon logo. Rodgon logo. No. Rodgon logo. There you go. Boom. I'm gonna drag that. Drag my whole logo over. Um, and then I'm going to put the logo on the X. So I'm going to rotate this first of all to make it look a little bit more like it. And then I'm going to transform it and distort it so it looks like it's on the X. And then I'm just gonna ghost it a little bit. So whatever I end up doing with the uh, with X, it'll just look like there's a little rod gun hiding in right there. Uh, just notice that I missed a little spot when it comes down to this. Is it here? Yeah. Well, oh, I'm doing white. Also coming back to this layer, I can now go in and erase all the guidelines that we set. Because we don't really need them anymore. We haven't touched the bottom, so let's leave that there for now. And everything we already cleaned, we can get rid of. Careful not to erase things you don't you still need. Or that you're gonna use. All right, so we have that. Now let's uh, come up with a fun text for the for the Teddy. Uh, where do I put that layer? Is it here? Here's Teddy. There. So let's ghost this down, and then here. Okay, what I like to do when I'm going through fonts is place a font in the general area where you want it. And then, yeah, it's going to like be annoying, but you just go through the different text that you have in your computer. Um, this is the first step in like finding typography. I hate having to take time to draw things when there's fonts that are already amazing and someone that's much, much better at typography than I am has already come up with it. You know, so it, I don't see anything wrong with that. So I'm just gonna find something fun. That one looks kind of cool. It's a little bit thin, but we can make it thicker. So, all right, so we have this. First, I look at the options. It does provide a bold option, so there you go. Boom. That's actually kind of cool. I'm going to edit this and make this into like a base for the text that I'm going to do. So I'm gonna rasterize the text. I'm going to warp the text make sure that the elements that I want to be big, elements that I want to be small, are arranged in the way that I need them. So in this case, uh, I want to separate the top of this 
I'm gonna cut it, paste it into a different layer. So now I have two layers. So now I can have this be like small and Teddy be big. Boom. So now that just becomes like Teddy in itself, just becomes the emphasis of the, the text. I'm gonna select the letters. I want a little bit less spacing. Yeah, I could go back to my text file and do that, but I'm already here. So it's not gonna take too long. I'll make this a little bit smaller so it fits nicer underneath the T without it digging into it. I noticed that I cut a little bit off, so I'm just gonna go back in and draw it again. And I'm going to get the other letters a little bit closer as well. And now I have to make Teddy, the actual text, look cute. And I need it to look like it's murderous. Uh, so one thing that I like to tell people, if you want to add distress or agony to your drawings, like if you want to convey that feeling, you need it to have sketchy lines and like jaggedy lines. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm making it skinnier so that I can fit it better or bigger into this area. I'm going to go in and transform it with the warp tool so I can get like a nice like fill up the place so make it look like an actual title instead of just being completely straight. Okay. So we have Teddy. Boom. Here is Teddy. We can tuck the here's right here as well. That doesn't look too bad. this so in my life I've done a bunch of comics um, maybe not for publications like you know Marvel or DC or anything like that but I have generated a bunch of comics in my life they are so incredibly taxing like as a as an art form oh my god like it's it's insane how much you have to do when it comes down to like doing comics, especially if it's just you doing it. Woof! It's like you gotta ink colors, uh, draw, make sure the story is good. Uh, you have to know the scripts. You, uh, you need to be able to write, draw, and do absolutely everything. And it's woof. Sometimes it's just insane. How much people actually put up with and how much they do okay so our layouts looking pretty nice pretty pretty nice if I say so myself I think that I'm going to take a creative decision here to make this look even more gruesome um, I'm going to make anything that would be touching blood is going to be black and I think that's going to generate a very interesting uh, look here. And we can always test this and like, you know, reverse it. But anything that's blood, I want this, I'm going to want this to be black. And it's going to create a higher contrast. We can still add a little bit of red when it comes down to the staining and a little bit over the blood. And it's going to make it look like very dark, like, coagulated blood and that's just going to add to the to the nastiness of it it's just going to make it it's also going to make it a lot easier to add effects like little like blood wisps and stuff like that and it's going to look better because now I can connect like the ground without it looking cartoony well, it still looks cartoony, but it is, I'm implementing like an element of uh, comic book-ish inking. Especially like 
you know, like black and white comic inking and editorial cartooning, like, you know, like comic strips that you see on Sunday papers and stuff like that. I love those, by the way. Like, if I ever had a chance to work for a publication and, you know, that's why I like my Zook's comic being like a comic strip. Not like a comic. Not like a printed comic. Well, I guess they're all printed. But more like a Sunday comic strip than uh, Marvel or like a Superman or Batman or something like that. Okay, so this is just gonna be like the puddle of blood that he like gathered from killing them. Killing it. For all we know, he killed the monster. For all we know, like he, he, he killed the bad guy. Right? And he killed a boogeyman or something. So we have that. Let me go through this hand. And the beauty of doing this sort of like effect with the blood is that it makes it really easy to just like add gruesomeness to it by just adding a little bit of lines. Like when everything is very sh shaped, very round, very uh, very smooth. Everything looks very innocent, which is something that we also want to do with this drawing and kind of like gruesome. But the gruesome parts need to be ultra gruesome because the character in itself is so cute. So when it comes down to blood splatter. Blood is actually a very thick, thick, uh, like, you know, liquid. Uh, so whenever it gets on something, it kind of lands on it like a gunk. And that's how you should see it whenever you are drawing, like, heavy elements of blood. Like if you're drawing, like, a vampire novel or something like that. Uh, you want it to look like it's on top of the surface. So, yeah, let me make a layer, a teaching layer. Remember how we mapped out items with shape? Like this cheek is round, right? It has a round shape to it. So when we're drawing, let's say we have like a little bit of blood on it, you have to draw it over it. And then if you draw it dripping, it's dripping around the shape and that's how you draw like water and stuff like that on like going around you like tears and stuff like that uh, I don't know if I want that there <laughs> but that's what you do whenever you're drawing on objects like if I drew little things I right hear right like a little mouth I know that I was drawing like chins on this guy so maybe he has one of those chins is formed right there right because the shapes are going around they're building shapes so the shape wraps you have a little bit of under chin it wraps and then this little drip might land right right there so I'm going to go onto my my drip layer and I'm gonna draw that there. And even when I erase that, it's gonna look really cool. It's gonna look like it's actually supposed to land there. It's something cool that you can learn to do with your drawings and it makes your drawings look better. Like it adds a little tiny, tiny minuscule amount of depth. And but that that combined with all the other things you learn end up looking making your stuff look better like it's just a game of progression and learning like different tools and techniques to bring out what you have in your brain like that's the ultimate goal if if you are a very creative person your goal is to be able to bring out all the ideas that you have in your mind that's the goal 
if you can manage to do that then you're in a solid place most people will like struggle with doing that with being able to get that um, that method or that skill set that requires is and you know things that they have in their brain uh, if you have like novels and entire worlds in your brain but you have no way to get them out well I mean that's with the limitation right that that's what's stopping someone from you know being the next uh, Steven Spielberg or you know whatever like the next big director or the big Disney like it's the resources to be able to do what you want to do but if you already have a little bit of that skill you can learn it as you go and the more that you learn to like to create with the more it opens up a lot of windows all right let's see if you guys have asked more stuff uh that i do this year so you guys are helping out uh this video is a little choppy yep i've been told that I, I'm gonna have to reset my things. All right, so he probably impacted someone with this axe or something, right? So, in order to get an effect like something like that happened, you have to imagine like the splatter that would come up. So, in this case, the splatter would like be heavier on the bottom and then just kind of dissipate towards the top and like little splatters like imagine that you're throwing a skipping rock right first it bounces a little bit and then it just like dissipates so try doing that when you're trying to create this effect and try not to be too uh too symmetrical it's supposed to be like literally just like like liquid dripping essentially that's what you're doing like you're grabbing it and just dragging it so it looks like it's dripping you have that and same thing with happened with the handle but it's going around you remember it's going around and it would probably just be dripping from the front and that blood would probably like Mix it with the hand. This would drip here. A little bit of these ashes would probably be on him. Like some ashes from this thing, just like smoking. Uh, at this point, I just start adding little tiny details that I see are necessary. Uh, extra cross hatching if I feel like something needs a little bit more depth or definition a little bit of texture just in certain areas not too much just to give extra depth to those parts that don't have any like they have large areas but they don't have uh, any overlapping lines or anything like that that I can use so at that point I use a tiny bit of cross hatching to generate a tiny bit of light and shadow. Very light, very mellow. Like that was too too much. Right okay. So I like that, I like that. Okay. And then I make one more layer. And then I'm going to add in little baby details. At this point, that's when I'm going to go in and add like wrinkles. The extra little lips to the eyelids. The cross hatching that's supposed to be a little smoother. Just to generate a little bit more depth in the areas that I believe need that to happen to.
if I'm making the character look a little bit more like sadistic or weird or like cracked out little tiny hairs here and there help out now he's supposed to have blood all over his face and his ears and stuff so I'm gonna try to match that remember it's on top and it's stripping down the ear and the ear has a shape Okay, so we have one. Maybe dripping down his little. Maybe this one goes into his like. Something like that would look pretty cool, I guess. Uh, yeah, that looks good. And it also enhances the eye because it makes it look like it's going behind the eye. So I kind of like that a lot. Maybe fill it in a little bit more. No, that's too much. I like 34. All right. That's better. Cut it off right there. Uh, okay. Actually, yeah. nah. Too much. Uh, let's see. He also has some on his other ear. on his upper brow and the upper brow one can trip into the eye and then it can come out like over here and it's going around the cheek around it goes around the cheek build the depth Okay, all right, so we have enough blood. It's, it needs to draw like a little bit of a trail of blood because he obviously walked somewhere, right? And if we really wanted to, we could have like someone's foot or something like that. Yeah, let's do that. We'll have someone's foot. See how that looks like. Okay. So. so it's always good to set a foreground, a background, and the middle ground. But. Hmm. Okay, I just noticed something, and I think I need to bring in. Is that the layer? Yeah, this layer. I wanted it to be like that. I wanted the axe to be coming out of there and overlap so it would create more, a better layout. So um, I forgot about that. So I won't do that. Right now. I'm just gonna bring everything in. And now, when we color this in, it won't show that. And that way we don't need this. I was wondering why it wasn't looking like it had the depth that I wanted it to have. And now I know. It's because I didn't have the elements that I needed. Uh, let's see. Is this one? Okay. 
So for now, as a placeholder, we're just going to set a white thing to give us that. And we're going to have this color. See how that's a much better layout? It just creates a little, it's more playful. So now I can bring this teddy a little bit smaller. There's teddy. We'll bring all the doodles and drips and all the other elements we did. Just scale it back this way. And we're back to where we were before. So, ta da! All right, so now we have a better layout for our comic book. Uh, just give me a second. Seems like I have some text messages. All right, so. Now that we have this, I'm going to extend this little bar so I can add something in there to make it look like, I don't know, like whatever issue it is. Uh, I have to create this element and then we can start coloring. This element is pretty easy to do. We just need a hard brush and then just take away the smoothing. If you see that your brush is not performing the way you want it. It's probably because you have some smoothing or something like that. And I'm just going to create the bigger blobs first. Fill it in. Change the brush size and just fill it in. This is going to go onto his head. So there you go. Let's make it a little bit bigger to fill in the space a little bit better. Perfect. Ta da! And now we just draw the little drips. So we have okay, 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 okay. So now let's see. Before we start going in and doing all our coloring, we can now make sure that all the layouts that we have set up already look good. Um, the homicidal teddy bear. a little subtitle for it. Ooh. Hold on. I get all uh, keyboard crazy and I start like using like a million shortcuts. There you go. Um, okay. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. I like this. Okay. So, boom. At which point? You should be saving your artwork as consistently as you can. So, I cannot express to you how many times I've gone hours and hours and hours and I end up uh, hating myself 
because I end up not saving and I end up losing a ton, a ton of, um, of work. So I highly recommend because it is horrible. I am masking out the creature shape. That way I can fit it better. All right. Homicidal Teddy. Here's Teddy. Okay. Make this a little smaller still. I'm starting to think that I should maybe make the whole layout a little bit more squared, but I don't really feel. Okay, yeah, we said we were going to make the words Teddy a little bit uh, cooler, right? I'm not going to leave it like that. So, I'm going to grab a thin brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sketch along the lines, along the edges. To give it like a distressed look. So you can see I'm not making an overly amount of lines and I'm not too overly concerned with them being perfect at all. So a matter of fact, I want them to be a little bit not perfect. You know, I want it to like look a little bit like there's a tiny bit of chaos there, but not enough that it makes it unlegible. You still want it to just look like a detail in the letter, not change the whole letter overall. Now that we have this, we just got to come up with what we're going to draw right here. Hmm. What should we draw right there? Okay. Um, we'll wait. We'll wait on that. We'll just draw that on top whenever we're done. Now, we're going to go into the color, and the color is the best part. So I'm just going to group everything we've done so far. And that's going to be our line work and template layer. Right? So all this is in one layer. We Okay. Now we got to choose a color for our layout. Uh he has a white background, but I don't like having white backgrounds. So I'm going to choose like a light gray. Light gray, not black. And I'm going to get a grunge texture um, from, let's see, if I, uh, let's see if I have one, I might have one. I have something somewhere to a grunge texture. Okay, so I have this uh, cool papyrus type of texture which we're gonna use and we don't need my logo anymore so that can go. so I'm just gonna use this texture as the color for my background to something that fits a little bit better with what I want to do now when you want to make instead of just changing the hue and the saturation of it let's say we want that that looks good, but I want this to be like a deep blue or like a purple. Yeah, violet looks good. 
highlighting red, maybe. There you go. Alright. Okay, perfect. Find the little things that I still need to erase. That way I don't have to go search for them. A color in the middle. I think it's this one. So our character right here. I'm gonna grab that color. And we're just gonna fill in. So double check my line mark. I already noticed a couple of, like parts where it needs to be refined and fixed. So going in and actually filling in the areas with a brush allows you like to second check your work. And as you go along, you just fix it. And that was this one we used black. So I go in and I fill in the spaces that still needed to be filled in. There will be little gaps here and there that you find. Just get rid of them. Let me go back to your color layer. Erase the parts you don't need for that color. I normally just do one color at a time. One color per layer that I'm going to be using. Later, I can just go in and edit it like that one layer. The, the more you have your artwork organized oh man it saves you so much hassle later so actually uh saving your files with the names that you need it like or saving your files in a system that you can find them easy because just saving